proximity to foundation wall and utilities, high water table, climate and soil conditions, all give us an opportunity to think outside the box when it pertains to segmental permeable pavements. Our project has all of the above. So we're going to install a segmental permeable pavement overlay. Using all the resources and technology available to us, we're going to begin with the scarification of the soil subgrade. That will increase its surface area and help with that rate of infiltration. The teeth on our bucket, approximately four inches long, but we have a very cohesive clay soil. We're not going to be able to get that. So we're going to shoot for one to two inches. Go ahead, fire it up. Now that we've increased that surface area, we can amend that soil. We're going to use an ASTM number eight quarter inch clean stone. We're going to add that to fill all those areas where the tooth bar ran over the surface and one inch on top of that. That will help with filtration, infiltration, and bearing ability. Once we've installed that one inch layer, we're going to install our Gator Fabric GF5. It's a woven geotextile fabric. We're going to shingle it with the flow of water, make sure it extends up the sides of the excavation. Once that's done, we can begin the construction of our base. Our base on a segmental permeable pavement installation is typically a number 57 stone. That's a mix of number fives and number sevens, half inch and three quarter inch fractured face clean stone. This material four inch thick will sandwich our Gator Grid 3030, a biaxial geogrid. That will give us the strength we need and a flat surface for which we can form and pour our porous concrete base. The porous concrete base will be installed, allowed to cure, then we'll tap con in an edge restraint, screed a one inch number eight bedding layer, and begin the installation of our concrete paving slabs with a proprietary spacer system and our aqua storm grid pavement system. Once that's done, we're gonna have the one of one segmental permeable pavement overlay. You can see the consistency of our porous concrete base. Metallic, almost shiny appearance. Just enough moisture to hydrate the cement molecules and bind those aggregates together. We're using a 3 8 inch chip stone, angular fractured face material. It holds together in the palm of my hand. That's the consistency you want. One of our concerns in a porous concrete base application is the deflection of our soil subgrade and our sub-base material. We have a fully loaded ready mix truck on our base and subgrade at this point, only four inches of material. So we want to be concerned with any of those ruts that may appear. We're getting very little to no deflection, so we're in good shape. We would typically be putting our joints in approximately every 15 feet. We're going just about nine feet here because of the over excavation on this new home. The way the stoop lines up, it would have broke here anyway. So we can control that with a controlled break.
Our engineers say in a light vehicular traffic application like this, for residential traffic load, we're going to be fine in terms of integrity. One thing you want to avoid is any type of rebar. You can see the rust on it. This is a porous material. Water will get in. This will expand and break up the concrete. Even epoxy coated rods are not coated on the ends, so we have a concern with that rust buildup. So if we needed additional reinforcement, we would be using a fiber, and that would be mixed into the concrete to give it the integrity we needed for any traffic load. Our porous concrete base has been poured and power screeded. We have a six mil plastic sheet over our area that is gonna protect the exothermic reaction, the release of heat and moisture we call free water, which is gonna make sure we have the right hydration of cement molecules in our base material. At 13% weight savings versus traditional ready mix, we save fuel and it uses less cement. Porous concrete bases as an environmentally friendly and structural solution to new home construction with a Teckle Block segmental permeable pavement wearing course. Our porous concrete base cured enough within 24 hours that we can traffic it with tracked equipment. So we installed our bedding layer. It's a one inch ASTM number eight bedding layer. No need for pre-compaction. Our edge restraint is an angle iron. There are a couple ways that you can affix that to the concrete. One way is a two inch screw. or hammer set either way will resist the horizontal forces of turning and braking vehicles our paving is ready to begin we're going to start with our Industria 12 by 24 by four inch thick. Strong name, stronger ingredients. Lifetime transferable warranty, rock salt resistance. And we're gonna install them with the versatile Gator Spacer system. Gives us a quarter inch gap and allows us to install this driveway in a permeable application. Contrasting textures, banding, scale change. How about Squadra? Three and a half by three and a half two and three eighths inch thick. So it's gonna require a bedding layer rescreed, but we're up to the challenge. Linear, half bond, Granitex, slate aged. This segmental permeable pavement hybrid install driveway, it's got a personality all its own. Everybody knows what this is. You can use it to simulate a porous material, like our porous concrete. And yes, 
water will run through it. The issue is no finds concrete or no finds asphalt has limited strength. So over time, it starts to get compressed. And as it compresses, the amount of pores reduce. Now I'm gonna use sugar to simulate sediment. We typically call total suspended solids, nitrates, phosphates, heavy metals, all those contaminants that are in the environment are also pushed down into the surface. Well, much less permeable now. So with a porous concrete or porous asphalt base, protecting it with a segmental permeable pavement system as its wearing course, with an easily agitated and removed joint fill for maintenance, it's a better long-term solution.